Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're watching the moon being bombarded by various asteroids from our solar system. In this particular video I actually wanted to talk about the idea of various uh, asteroids and cosmic dust coming to our planet Earth, specifically with regards to formation of water on Earth and possibly answering a question if water could have come from the asteroids and the cosmic dust. Anyway, welcome to What the Math, and let's see what we can find out. So today we're going to be talking about Earth, and specifically about asteroids coming to Earth and delivering all kinds of stuff. You may not realize, but pretty much everything on the surface of Earth, including of course uh, most, if not all, of the metals and stuff like gold and platinum and all that, actually came from the outer space. Um, it very likely came from asteroids that uh, delivered this material, or from cosmic dust that over time basically spread all of the stuff on the surface. We know this uh, almost for a fact because when you think about it, things like gold and things like uh, platinum are actually pretty heavy. So if they were there from the beginning of the um, solar system when Earth was still young, when Earth was still very, very hot, if they were there from, from the start, from when Earth was basically still a kind of a molten, uh, fiery world, most of this stuff would have sunk to the bottom and actually would have been inside the planet. It would have actually been in the center and probably is. There's probably a lot of gold in there, there's a lot of platinum. Um, and uh, today we know that things that are on the surface that are heavier than they should be probably came from uh, cosmic dust and the asteroids. So. Every single second on Earth, we basically get stuff deposited from the outer space. Now today there's actually quite a lot of studies that try to find uh, how much material actually comes to Earth from, uh, from the outside. And we usually do this by looking at the Antarctica. So it's very isolated here, um, it's also very, very white. And so by looking at a certain spot here, we can usually uh, try to estimate how much material came from the outside, from essentially from space. So if we find an asteroid here, it, it's usually quite visible because it sort of leaves a black mark, but also because um, of the way that this place is isolated, you don't expect anything else to, to get deposited there. And uh, most modern studies estimate the amount of material coming to Earth from outer space, either as asteroids or as cosmic dust, is anywhere between um, as low as 5 tons per day to as high as 300. Most um, average values are about 200 metric tons uh, per day. Now, 200 tons is quite a lot. It's, you know, it's about... 25 or so um, elephants, I guess, and uh, it's basically um, the amount that comes from outer space over the entire surface of Earth. So you don't expect a, a very large asteroid to suddenly bring all this mass. It's probably tiny rocks here and there that we don't even see. They don't even leave any marks, but they do uh, deposit all of the materials over time. Just to give you an example, um, back uh, in 2013, I believe, uh, there was an asteroid in Chelyabinsk that created a huge sort of media sensation when it passed over um, a certain region and it kind of collided with, uh, I believe it was like a lake or something. And um, the mass of that particular asteroid, let me just actually demonstrate for you here, was actually a lot less than uh, the infamous Apophis, the asteroid that uh, did come close to Earth a few years back. Uh, Apophis is uh, actually several times heavier than, or more massive than uh, the Chelabins asteroid. And just to give you an idea here, I'm going to actually show you how small the Chelabinsk uh, meteor or Chelabinsk um, meteorite technically, because it did land on Earth, uh, was in comparison to Apophis. So here we have to actually decrease its mass to approximately 14 million kilograms or 14,000 ton. And this is approximately maybe this big, a little bit smaller than this. Here we go. This it's, It was about this big, nine, maybe 10 meters in size. Uh, the Apophis asteroid, if you were to compare it to this, was a lot larger, or is a lot larger because it's still out there. And obviously this doesn't compare to some of the larger things like uh, the comets, which would be tremendously big in comparison. So if you were to actually um, 
look at the history of various uh, large asteroid collisions in the last few hundred years, uh, I guess the bigger one would be the infamous Tunguska uh, event, which may have involved a rock that was a little bit larger than this, but not by much. And all in all, this actually still fits into the idea of uh, total mass of uh, stuff that comes to our planet being approximately 200 or so tons of material per day. Because if you were to calculate this in terms of per year, that's about 73 or maybe maximum 100,000 tons of material per year. And the mass of that particular asteroid that was in Chuabinus was only about 14,000. So all of this kind of fits into our uh, overall pattern here. So basically you'd expect approximately, let's say 100,000 tons of material to arrive to Earth um, every year or so. So, um, okay, let's say, oh, something just fell there. Let's say that this is going to be our average, 100,000 tons of material per year. Would that be enough to actually deliver, let's say water? Would that be enough to deliver all of the water uh, onto our planet uh, using this particular technique. In other words, could it, all of the water have come from essentially cosmic dust and from asteroids, assuming that Earth is about 4.5-ish billion years? So this is, uh, this is where it gets a little bit mathematical, but basically what we need to do is we need to take all of our water, which is about 1.35 uh, times 10 to the power 21st mass um, in kilograms, which is a bowl that's about, maybe about this big. So this is the water bowl uh, that we actually have explored previously in se several videos. But basically this is the water bowl um, that is from Earth. Now, oh, it's already falling apart actually. Uh, could this have come from space in terms of cosmic dust and asteroids? So in other words, if we were to consider that 100,000 uh, tons per year is an average, could over 4.5 billion years this create this uh, well let's let's just do some math here so let's let's just say hundred thousand is about this much it's basically a bowl that's about 19.7 or I guess 20 meters in radius so this is how much material we get on earth per um, per year now this is just everything though this is not just water uh, about 1% of all of this would be water, because that's sort of the amount of water there is in the solar system compared to everything else. But what would happen if we did receive this amount for about uh, 4.5 billion years? Well, obviously, we need, to, we need to just take this amount and multiply this by 4.5 billion, and what we'll get is something that's about this big. It's about uh, 5.4 kilometers in size, and it's actually kind of similar to Halley's Comet in size and in mass, and this is after about 5 billion years. Now, it doesn't even compare to how much water we have on Earth. As a matter of fact, uh, assuming, of course, that uh, the rate of change and the rate of asteroids hasn't really changed much in, um, in 5 billion years, which is, of course, probably not true. Uh, but let's just assume that it was constant, that this is only the amount of stuff you'll get here. Uh, so, in other words, this doesn't explain where water could have come from, because 1% of this would only be like this big. So this doesn't really add up. Uh, cosmic dust by itself cannot explain water and also asteroids by themselves arriving to Earth pretty much uh, on a regular basis don't really explain the water. Uh, there's just way, way too much. Now, this would mean that either water came from a very, very, very large collision with an object that basically delivered all of the water at once, or it's possible that the water was there from the beginning. In other words, Earth may have actually started with a lot of water on it which um, maybe is kind of difficult to explain because you don't expect water to be in this particular region of space in the early solar system. Now, there are obviously other theories for um, why and how water came to Earth, but what's really interesting is that we actually did discover a very uh, interesting composition or, I guess, a ratio of the type of water we have on Earth comparing it to the type of water we actually have on our own moon uh, because there is a little bit of some uh, water that we did discover here. Um, and we, we actually found that uh, it seems that water was present from the creation of Earth. In other words, at least the same type of water was there already, which could actually mean that maybe, just maybe, this huge bowl that you see right here actually came not from the cosmic dust, but possibly from the collision with Theia, with the object that collided into Earth that created the moon. 
Now, this will take us to another video uh, in the future because there's actually quite a lot to talk about it, but uh, this will be too long for one video. But the idea is pretty simple. If this is the water we have on Earth, and this is the amount of stuff we get from space after about 4.5 billion years in terms of cosmic dust. And this is the amount of stuff we get from cosmic dust, asteroids, and all this other stuff coming to Earth on an annual basis. Uh, it just doesn't really explain uh, where the water came from. Now, obviously, one solution to this problem is that maybe, just maybe, in the past, we were getting a lot more of this. Maybe it was exponentially bigger, because back then there were more asteroids, more dust, more of everything in space. But even with that assumption, this is just too big of a ball to create just from cosmic dust and just from asteroids. The uh, Earth would have to receive quite a lot of collisions with very, very large objects for it to receive the amount of water that it currently has. But anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. I really wanted to just do a little bit of calculations and basically kind of try to see if we can recreate the water bowl simply based on the amount of uh, various cosmic dust and various asteroids we get on Earth every single day and every single year. And the only thing I could create is this. It doesn't really compare at all. So this is what we would have gotten in 5 billion years or so. Well, anyway, so on this note, let's actually uh, maybe take this amount and collide it with Earth just to see what would happen if this did uh, one day collide with Earth and what kind of a collision and what kind of effects would it, would it actually create on, on the planet. In other words, let's see what would happen if all of the cosmic dust from 5 billion years of Earth history came to us all at once. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something else that you didn't know before. Come back tomorrow to learn about space, sciences, and other things through video games. And subscribe if you still haven't, because this is all that we're going to be doing on this channel for a time being. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And look at that. That's all our cosmic dust, all at once, creating this beautiful collision on the planet.